it's a little ugly, sorry. I just need to go down there. I'll come down, sorry. Okay, so hello, my name is Tan, and thank you so much for taking the time to come listen to all of the projects. So, my project was about an early life adversity influencing a social behavior in Mrs. Macau and I was staying in Lyon, France with Dr. Pierre Francesco Ferrari. So a childhood trauma carries throughout life. The trauma that you get or an adverse experience that you get in childhood doesn't only affect your childhood, but it carries on throughout your life and it can impact your physical health during your adulthood. So like for example, an adverse childhood experience in human can be like becoming an orphan during your during like when you're a kid and when you're developing. And because you're not getting that protection that you usually get from your parents, that can lead up to like a disrupt in your development during pre-adolescence and that can impact some of the social, emotional, and cognitive impairments. And then because you don't have like the you don't have like a role model to follow like your parents or you don't have a parent's guidance during your time of developing yourself and like trying to identify yourself, you might develop more tendency to take more risky decisions in your life. And then one of these risk risk decisions can be like trying out drugs because like you didn't know it was like a really effective drug. Like that can lead on to like a future problem of getting addicted to drugs and then that can potentially lead up to your adulthood that's going to lead up to like a social problem and potentially leading up to like an early death. So to test how the early life adversaries affect the later life, later life well-being, we test this in the monkey because just like us, the monkeys also need a maternal care to have a normal development in their cognitive state and emotional and a social, social function. So, and then this, especially in the monkey world, the early adolescent behavior is really important because that's the time when they're trying to find their position in their social hierarchy. And then, so, we compare the mother bear monkeys to a pure bear monkey. So you can see like the first picture where the baby monkeys are raised by their mother. So they're, they have like a full protection and they have enough resources to go explore and stuff. However, the pure bear monkeys, they are just raised by the colony because they don't have a maternal figure or they are missing out on that protection. So to design this experiment, we had we looked at 21 mother reared and pure reared adolescent monkeys in both sexes uh, at, at age of two and again at age of three. And then each of the adolescents encountered an unknown adult monkey, both male and female, and while we were recording their submissive facial expression. So you can kind of see from the figure that adolescent monkey are in their enclosure and then the adult monkey are wheeled up in a chair to have the encounter. And then these are the cameras that we are recording the monkeys. And then we specifically looked at a facial expression because that tells us about like what they're feeling and what their emotion is and how they are learning a social interaction by their peers or their mother figure. So the first submissive facial expression that I looked at was the lip smacking. So lip smacking is when you, it looks like the monkey's chewing but without the food. So this lip smacking in the monkey language is like an attempt to make a connection with the other monkey that you're interacting with. So you're saying like, oh, I'm a really friendly monkey, so like please like be friendly to me. Like I'm a really nice monkey, it's like trying to become your friendly, right? So when we looked at a frequency of this facial expression while they're interacting, with the adult monkey, we saw some changes throughout two years. So you can see this is a frequency, this is like one lip smack per second, and then this is the adult sex. So the top part is when the adolescents were interacting with female adult monkey, and then the bottom is when they're interacting with unknown male monkeys. And then the left column is telling us when they're age of two, and the right column when they're age, the adolescents are age of three. 
So you can see how the, oh, sorry. And then the pink, red box is represented by the mother rear groups, and then the blue box is a peer rear group. So you can see when you just look at the top row, you can see how that there is an increase of the facial expression frequency when they're interacting with a female monkey and a mother rear monkey especially. And then you can also see, or you can see the opposite effect in the male, when they're interacting with the male monkey, that there is a decrease in the facial expression in both mother rear and peer rear monkey. And then a second, <laughs> the second face of the question that we looked at yeah, was a few groups. So the monkey kind of looks like they're smiling, right? The thing is, in a monkey world, it's a completely opposite of smiling. It's showing them, it's telling us that, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. Like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to like get closer to you. So they're expressing fear, basically. So, so it's like opposite of lip smacking, because lip smacking is saying that, oh, I want to be closer friends with you. Fear girl is like, I don't want to be friends with you. I'm too scared of you. Yeah. So this is the same graph as the last time, but we also see the consistent effect of when the adolescent age from year two to year three, there's a here there's a higher increase in a facial expression frequency in the mother rear monkey when they're interacting with a unknown female monkeys, and then we also see the same effect of interacting with a male monkey how there's a decrease in facial expression. So, so far, does that make sense for everyone? So there's less fear for this one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for, for the male. Are, is, are the monkeys who are like in the enclosure, are the sexes mixed together so it's like all? It's a, it's one adolescent monkey looking at one unknown adult. And the adult is like male or female, but the other monkey, is it like both sexes, all their data is pulled? Yeah. yeah, this is all gender of the adolescent. So in addition to those, what is it, just those two facial expression, we also collected other submissive facial expression. And then when we even combine those all like in inclusive facial expression of being submissive, you also see the similar effect of increase in a, a submissive facial expression when they're aging from year two to year three, when they're interacting with an female adult monkeys, and then you see the opposite effect when they decrease in a facial expression when they're interacting with a male monkey when, as they age. So the conclusion is that, that there was a larger increase of a submissive facial expression of, by the mother rear adolescent monkey when they are interacting with unknown female monkeys when they age from age two to three. And that tells us that there is somehow of an influence of that mother rearing experience that is influencing the way that the adolescent interact with female monkeys, female adult monkeys. So in a monkey world, it is really important to have like a higher ranking because, and then the ranking system is different for like each sexes. So like for female, when the monkey was born in like a higher ranked mother, they stay at that high level. So it's like kind of like born, like being birthed by like a queen. Like you're gonna be princess for your rest of your life until you become queen or something. And then, but the male monkey, they have to fight for their rank. So even if they're like born in like the top mother, if they like lose a fight with another monkey or like they are becoming weaker, they gonna lose that rank and they're gonna be demoted with their rank. So, so like adolescent monkeys that is not appeasing to the higher fe higher ranked female monkey, that can they can have a lower ranking during their adulthood, which means that they might not have the enough resources or like a, not enough food for them. So this like this goes back to the pyramid that we saw how the early life adversary of like missing your mother can lead up to a physical physical barriers that you can get in an adult in an adulthood. So in the future, we want to see how this behavior is influenced by the brain structure itself. So we're going to be using an advanced MRI technique 
to measure the change in brain connectivity that may somehow show a correlation of the spatial expression of submissive behavior changing over the course of the development. And this is also part of my, oh, this will be my part, this will be part of my thesis as well. So it, like, it's like very tenuously related to what I do in Arizona as well. So personal impact, there's so many pictures on here. So I think the biggest thing was that this experience allowed me to solidify my goal to apply to MD-PhD programs. So actually today I got an interview today. <laughs> so yeah, I was really excited, I was scared, but okay. <laughs> and then I was in France, but a lot of my people in the lab was Italians. So I learned a lot about like cultures in Italy and I think the biggest lesson that I got from them is like, you have to treat food very seriously. <laughs> and then you have to cook it the correct way. <laughs> and I also learned like how to make tiramisu or like uh, quiche Lorraine from an undergrad student. So that was amazing. And then I also met so many people from all over the world, which I was never been exposed to that before. So I think that diverse experience allowed me to see like a whole another perspective of the world. I feel like I was in like a different universe interacting with other people. And then, yeah, and then I think I really truly learned how to function as a full independent person. Because <laughs> I think if, if I'm in the US, I have a social social support system that I can always reach out to or like I can always call up a friend. Or I can call up a friend when it's like 3 a.m. in Arizona, so. I think I really learned that as well. So like the top picture is my lab outing. It was for my goodbye dinner. That was after a picnic. And then this, Chloe actually took this picture. This was when I was at London watching Les Miserables. So soon after this, I started crying because it was like my dream to watch Les Miserables. And then this was also one of the outings. And then her name is Sabine and then we met her, uh, I met her on like a flex bus to Paris. So that was very interesting. And this is also in Lyon. And then this is two of, our, two of my grad students who, we, we can see the name tag. That's like a name tag that we made so we can sneak into like a conference that was going on in the institute so we can get like free snacks. <laughs> yeah, it was in the institute, so. And then this is my picture of like when I first learned how to open a wine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then in addition, I didn't add a picture of like a fire or something, but I was there when there was like a bunch of protests because of the pension age increase. But I saw a lot of broken glasses and yeah, there was car on the fire as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for making this possible. And I will never ever forget this. Ever. Thank you. This is a little tangentially related because there, what is it, the French lab is looking at also the adolescent development, mm -hmm. but they are having like a, like a cohort wise. And then in Dr. Gothard's lab in Arizona, we're having one cohort and then we're following them through. And then we're doing different behavioral measurements to look at their behavior, yeah. Did you collect data like since there's a two, a year gap between the two groups? Did you collect like was the, the cohorts offset from the year? It was it okay, was it was already collected. Okay. Then I looked at the data and I and uh, analyzed it, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So is this what you're looking to continue doing your research for when you're in your like doing your PhD? Oh in your PhD? I think so. I think I'm I am not hundred percent sure on what research I'm interested in, but I really like adolescence. So I think I want to continue adolescence. Um, somewhat, something about adolescence. Yeah. That's a really normal question. I have no idea. <laughs> Thank you.